Hi, George here. And what I'd like to do in this video is show you the Servo I ventilator. Some of the external features that are specific to the Servo I ventilator so that when you're using the Servo I for the first time or if you haven't had a chance to use it in a while, when you look at it, some of the stuff will appear very familiar for you. So I'm going to grab the camera off the tripod and let's take a look at some of the things that you'll find on the Servo I ventilator made by Maquette or McKay, depending on how you say it. So I'll grab the tripod off, hopefully without shutting the camera off. And let's take a look at the ventilator. Okay. So here is the, the ventilator. And if we start off, we should probably start, I guess, with the screen right over there. The screen itself, when you turn the ventilator on, it's a touch screen. It does a lot of features, a uh, touch screen, but it also has some of these knobs down over here. There's a plastic retainer that's clear plastic. You just have to pull this up. And if you need to make an adjustment to a ventilation dynamic like respiratory rate or FiO2, these are going to be specific to the different types of dynamics and you'll see it on the screen. If you need to make a change really quickly, you don't have to go back into the mode menu. You can just simply grab the knob and make the change if it's available with one of these knobs. And there's only four of them here, so you're kind of restricted and it is basically mode specific. Now another little uh, tabby that we have underneath this plastic case, now if you look really closely, it kind of looks like an on off switch, doesn't it? Like you see on a lot of different appliances. This is a button that you push to take the ventilator out of standby when you want to start ventilation. Plus you can also use it to put the ventilator into standby if you needed to disconnect your patient from the ventilator to do, I don't know, a transport or something like that. So it's a, initiates ventilation and puts the ventilator into standby depending on when you push it. All right. A couple other buttons on the other side that function the same way or in the same style but don't do the same thing. Some other buttons for doing your ventilation maneuvers on your patients like your inspiratory hold, your expiratory hold, etc. All right. So that's the screen, main screen. Um, what else can we show you? Well, the circuit is a fairly standard circuit that you'll see on our ventilators that we have here at our institute and hospital, but you might notice that uh, your circuits look similar to this, but could be a bit different. Don't be too worried about that. Now, one of the things on our servos, we put these filters, these expiratory filters, between the expiratory limb of the circuit and the expiratory inlet on the exhalation manifold to essentially filter all the exhaled gases coming back from the patient. Okay, so if you guys don't have that, it's probably a good idea to put that in line or your center might have something else that they they use. If we go back to the front of the ventilator, there's a couple of doors down here. If you push this, it's a storage area. That's where you'll find things like the connector for doing the pre-use check on the ventilator, extra supplies. Another drawer at the bottom. You just simply push it and then push it in to close it. Wheels. It's a good idea to make sure when you're using the ventilator that you lock the wheels so it's not going to go anywhere, etc. And there's also this little half moon thing down here. Eh? Now if you want to open the cabinet up, and that's the cabinet there, if you want to open the cabinet out to get the expiratory cassette out, and this is the expiratory cassette, it contains the exhalation valve, etc. All you have to do is put your hand in here and lift up. Can you hear that? Lift up, and then this cabinet should come right out. Not sure if you noticed that in 3D, but it came right out. Now, the reason you want to take or open that cabinet up is that at some point in time, after you use this ventilator on a patient, you want to take this expiratory cassette out and send it for cleaning between your patients. So, to get that out, all you have to do is disconnect the expiratory limb and simply push down on this button here and that should release it and then it just comes out like so. So on the expiratory cassette, I'll stick it on the bench here, you've got this little slot right here and that slot's very um, important for aligning the expiratory cassette to the ventilator properly. This end right over here is where you attach that expiratory filter or the expiratory line to it. And then this piece is just where you handle it and you hold it to pick it up to put it in place. Now it's important to make sure that when you're putting this expiratory cassette back into the ventilator, this slot here lines up with this 
piece sticking out of the ventilator, plus this bar is meant to line up with this ridge on the expiratory cassette. So you slide this into that bar first, and then gently place the, the expiratory cassette back into the ventilator and listen for the click. So to line this up properly, here we go, you can see we're just lining that up in there like so. I'll do it again so you have a chance to see. Taking that slot, placing it in there like this. Okay, and now all we're simply doing is letting this fall back into place and then pushing this down till you hear the click. There. So now it's properly attached and properly lined up so that we don't wreck anything on the cassette or anything on the ventilator. Put that back on there. And now we just simply slide that back into place and it should click and lock into place. All right, so let's go back on this side of the ventilator. There's nothing really here on the ventilator itself that we pretty much use. Standard humidifier that we have in our center. Okay. A couple of little slots here. These are where the uh, batteries are, so if we ever lose power, the battery should kick in and work. Above the battery there is this port right over here. Now, if you look closely, it says NEB. Okay. Now, this symbol is meant to represent with the servo that this is a or an ultrasonic port to hook up the ultrasonic cable that's specifically used for the servo made or the macat made um, ultrasonic nebulizer that you can run with this ventilator to deliver any kind of aerosolized medication to the patient. All right, so that is specific to this ventilator and the servo company. You cannot, and I'll repeat that, you cannot place an oxygen tubing on there and expect it to work because it won't and you cannot place um, another ultrasonic nebulizers company's brand or whatever on there as well. It's, this one is specific for servo and you can use that if you've got the appropriate ultrasonic for it. Okay, so let's keep on going looking at the ventilator. Back of the unit, back of the screen, this tab right over here is for adjusting the display so you can move it forwards or backwards. Let's just move it down a bit. And there's one in the front that I'll show you later that's for adjusting it, the display to go left or right. So swiveling it left or right. Now the important thing on the back here, well, there's a lot of important things, but this is an important thing. Where is the on-off switch? Well, the on-off switch is placed right here. There's your on-off switch. It's just a simple toggle or it could be a slide. To turn the ventilator on, you just push this like that and it'll turn the ventilator on. And to shut it off, you just do the opposite. So we'll turn that or let that go back to there. It's hidden. I'll just make sure that I didn't turn the ventilator on. Nope, didn't turn on. Okay, so the on off switch, a little rack or a holder for the uh, pneumatic gas hoses for oxygen and air, as well as for the power cords. One power cord is going to be for the humidifier. The other power cord is going to be for the humidifier. This is the power cord for the ventilator. This is the power cord right over here for the humidifier. I hope I said that right, right? One power cord for humidification, right there. One for the ventilator's operation. Go back to this side, support arm. That's this thing right over here. Support arm supports the weight of the circuit. So you can adjust it so it's appropriate for your patient once you've got the ventilator attached to the patient. This little part right over here, this is where the gases come out of the expiratory cassette little door on this side open that up it's got a bunch of features fan inside there you can see the connections for the filtered medical air for the medical oxygen as well but there's nothing else really that we use um, in our center with this ventilator so a little door just close that go to the front again that's pretty well it the servo i ventilator oh yeah to adjust the screen to move the screen you simply lift this up and then you can move the screen into the direction that you want. But you have to have that lifted up. Let it go down, locks it into place. It doesn't move. Support arm right over here for hanging your distilled water bag for inhalation. The water just simply goes into the humidifier and the humidifier pot. That's that thing right over there. Adjust the water level automatically with the float inside of it. And that in essence, is the external features on the servo eye ventilator. Put this back on the tripod. 
Now, if you have any questions or comments, put that on there. Yeah, I always have a problem putting that back on there. They still don't have it on.